А всіх вітаю. Доброго дня. Мені наче дали відмашку, що можна починати, тому будемо починати. А, мене звати Катерина Алимова. Я сьогодні представляю House of Europe разом зі своєю колегою Ліною Романухою, яка буде онлайн. А, говоритимемо про шлях... Онлайн. We'll talk about the, the path that our programs have gone through within the past nine months, that we, um, how we um, adapted to the situation and how we helped. We'll focus on two programs. The first is um, international residencies, and the second one is uh, Zapravka Initiative, bus stop together with um, our colleagues in Ukrainian Institute and Ukrainian Fund, as well as in the, um, independent experts who joined our initiative. Just a short agenda, uh, so that you know what to expect, what we uh, started with, what we wanted to talk about, what House of Europe really is, what the scope of the program uh, was until uh, February 2022. Later, uh, war response, this was a program and what kind of changes we needed to implement. Uh, we'll talk about the, the plans uh, for the future, the changes for the nearest future, and uh, international residency programs, including the Zapravka program. What is House of Europe? This is a program funded by the European uh, Union and developed by Goethe Institute together with a consortium of uh, partners um, um, by the Britain, British English um, German and, and Czech, Czech uh, organizations. The biggest sector is culture, followed by education, um, social initiatives, media, and work with uh, the youth. Uh, a number of programs uh, is very diversified. Um, there are mobility programs, education programs, and uh, society development programs, ending up with huge programs like infrastructural grants, um, translation grants, and uh, international grants. Um, in essence, as we started our perfect, uh, this is how our perfect uh, um, outline looked like. The programs with the biggest activity uh, in the sphere of culture, and almost within the past three years, this did not happen at all. Uh, accordingly, uh, it all started with the COVID pandemic when all mobility programs, which comprised a huge part of the mobility program, could not be realized. Uh, at this moment, this was a, a test for us how uh, fast we can react to the changing situation. Uh, at this moment, new programs uh, came about, such as uh, emergency stipends, uh, a program which was um, developed within two, three weeks, and uh, every single week for five months uh, we had open calls um, with over 1,500 uh, stipends in the sphere of professional uh, culture activism. Uh, also, we had Hathathan program. It's not a typo, don't worry. It's uh, derived from the word hata, which is uh, home in Ukrainian. Um, that was a, um, an online event um, with over 1,000 uh, experts, with IT specialists, who, within, uh, who completed over 60 projects within a few days only. And they received grants to realize these projects. Uh, then, um, thirdly, we had um, digital cooperation grants. Uh, as you know, everything turned digital in the COVID era, so we wanted to retain the uh, element of co the cooperation of um, Ukrainian, the representatives of uh, Ukrainian uh, act 
cultural activism sphere and Ukrainian representatives. That included digital uh, components. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Digital Labs is an education um, grant, uh, which we um, repeated a few times later. It includes many interactive uh, components uh, with plenty of experts from all around the world and individual mentoring sessions for the particip uh, participants. Uh, you can um, f get funds to realize your own idea. Uh, we had such an experience until February 2022, and uh, understandably, the implementation of uh, projects later on required much more effort and much more speed, much more, um, much better. Um, so within the past seven um, months, we helped, uh, we received support uh, exceeding one and a half million euros. So the uh, these um, funds were transferred to, to Ukrainians and they were spent in Ukraine, indeed. Uh, such Uh, the first step was the, um, the support of s the society and uh, providing, for example, first aid kits, uh, medication and food. Then we had the possibility of repurpose the grants. Um, all grant receivers who have not um, used all the grants they could spend uh, the remainder of the money to the um, articles of first need. For example, in uh, the city of Mariupol, instead of um, a cinema festival, money was uh, transferred to the relocation. Uh, grants to support this uh, uh, society uh, we transferred the grants to help people on the front line. Some, some, of, some of the money um, helped people um, evacuate from, from the front line. Further on, uh, infrastructure grants. Uh, we supported over 30 projects uh, which had to reshape their, um, uh, their programs in order to secure uh, their safety and their, their teams. Uh, moving on, uh, stipend program, it's individual projects. Uh, within four months after February, I believe it was in the middle of, um, of the summer, we started implementing education programs. As we understood, this makes sense, and we knew how to do it. So. Th this is how we returned to online seminars and uh, workshops that we planned, uh, initially planned uh, to perform in spring. House of Europe is a program, a project uh, planned for four years. Quite recently we received uh, the information that uh, this program will be continued. Further projects can change, but in essence, this is the way how they will look like. They will be based on the um, current programs, but they will be supported uh, further on. For example, infrastructure programs, huge infrastructure uh, programs to rebuild Ukraine will follow. Uh, creative and um, educational startups will also be supported. Individual support uh, will also be included, including grant projects. Such projects are for um, um, alumni. And in terms of c our capacity building and this course formats, uh, these projects are aimed at supporting um, uh, the community. This includes digital labs, uh, hackathon, uh, conferences and workshops, and obviously uh, residential uh, residency programs. Uh, now let's move on to the case of international residencies. 
this is a picture from uh, the uh, from the this year's um, residency mm -hmm. of uh, Peter Riaska in uh, the city of Uzhorod. Uh, we are very happy uh, f for him. Uh, we meant it as a platform for uh, to meet um, the artists from Ukraine and European Union. And within this time, the um, the program has changed. Uh, the Ba the base uh, part has not changed, uh, but the research component and the educational component w were were added to um, uh, to to this base. First uh, residencies uh, within the past nine months, uh, we started uh, open call to invite European um, uh, participants from the European Union. Unfortunately, this did not happen. What we changed are partners from the e e EU, Poland, uh, Sweden, and German offered help to, um, to invite Ukrainian um, artists to their countries. We already had partners and we're ready to, um, to invite you uh, European participants, but um, but in the end, uh, the situation looked completely the other way around. Uh, we uh, planned to pay out individual um, funds. We had the possibility of change the activity um, and to devote some shell out some um, some funds to emergency situations and emergency needs. However, the, we implemented the residency in the way it was planned. Uh, the digital lab on its part, uh, our residencies, uh, the, the, the core um, participants is managers, curators, and researchers. And exactly for these three categories, we uh, performed three um, uh, programs, including digital laboratories uh, for researchers and art critics. We invited over 15 uh, speakers. Uh, we hosted um, lectures and mentoring sessions. All the participants in the lab received uh, stipends. What was uh, adapted? Firstly, uh, the topics were uh, strictly connected to the situation uh, as is, as was. And the crisis situation, as far as, uh, um, and we adapted um, as much as we could what was possible. We added another um, competition um, component. This time we decided uh, that the situation is nervous enough, so we decided to um, to grant every. Um, for everybody to receive a grant, not to stress them out too much. All the pro programs uh, were performed really quickly. Uh, we, we sent them uh, video recordings so they could uh, take a look um, as fast as they can so that they do not lose contact with their education process. Uh, but uh, during air raids, uh, they obviously were hiding in, in the shelters to to save their lives. Uh, now I'd like to uh, give the floor to uh, my friend who will talk about the third component, um, which is more research-based, but she will, Elina will uh, talk more on, on the subject. Добрий день, шановні колеги. Приємно з вами поговорити, принаймні в онлайн форматі. Я буду дуже рада представити таку ініціативу, як заправка. Якщо у вас будуть якісь питання, то сподіваюся, що я зможу на них відповісти. Отже, ініціатива «Заправка» – це е, таке створення та співпраця трьох головних установ. Ви бачите, у мене якісь технічні проблеми. Отже, це спільна програма трьох установ. Фонду української культури, Українського інституту та також програми Дім для України. 
І це почалося у 2020 році. Ми вже два роки працюємо як команда, як колектив. І що для мене не є найважливішим в цій ініціативі, що це, це така бажання проджект-менеджерів, щоб поєднати їхні зусилля, щоб розвивати свою помітність у сфері мистецької резиденції, якщо говорити про такі головні цілі, то, звісно, це консолідація наших зусиль, нашого to understand uh, the main needs and how we can uh, help uh, to um, survive in uh, these circumstances. Uh, also, we work in increasingly uh, in visibility of Ukrainian residences, uh, so we try and also to promote them internationally and also inside the country. Uh, and surely we would like uh, uh, to uh, raise the professional standards uh, of uh, people who work in Ukrainian residency and also you know, support uh, each other. Uh, also, uh, we want to create some uh, common mechanism uh, to support Ukrainian residencies, and it's a uh, uh, question not only uh, inside country, but also internationally. And uh, here you can see briefly uh, our team. Uh, so it's Les Vinogradov, he is now independent expert and live now in the USA. Uh, Katerina Limova from House of Europe, uh, Anastasia Manulak from uh, uh, Ukrainian Institute, uh, me, Yulia Lenina, she is independent expert, uh, Natalia Kernitska, she is from Ukrainian Culture Foundation, and Olya Tikhonova from She now in uh, independent expert and living in Austria. And here is a short um, notice about uh, our activities, what we managed to make. So firstly, we started from mapping of Ukrainian art residency and create Google map where you can uh, see um, active residencies. And uh, to tell you the truth, some of them uh, were new for me personally. And it's nice uh, that at least now we have more information about them and not only on this map, but also internationally. We start to cooperate with such organization as uh, trans artists and uh, help you for Ukrainian residency to make um, English language profiles on this database. And we're happy that uh, when we started, it was only four of them in this database, and now it's uh, 20. And also we make um, online consultations uh, free of charge, uh, surely. So everyone can wrote us email. We schedule time and uh, provide our uh, like advices about how you can develop or create your residency. And also we work on newsletter. We're trying to share information about different um, uh, residency opportunities. And uh, very important work in which we are working now, it's creation of toolkit, uh, because quite often we get um, uh, que like questions, uh, where can we read like a sort of manual how to create residency in Ukrainian language? And we realize that uh, actually that's uh, maybe our task to create such manual toolkit uh, where people can get general information about uh, how to create a residency starting from concept uh, till the very end of like reporting for example and um, uh, if we talk about um, researching uh, part of uh, this initiative uh, i uh, will introduce you results of our part time monitoring of ukrainian landscape um, uh, residency And uh, we use, uh, thanks to Alektina Kahidze, her illustrations here. And uh, uh, we started uh, this uh, monitoring uh, in May, June 20 this year, uh, after the full-scale invasion uh, of Russia in Ukrainian territory. And we boast on uh, in-depth interviews and managed to speak with 12 main uh, organizers in Ukraine from different uh, parts of country. 
And uh, here is a like, general uh, results of this monitoring. Uh, surely, I think uh, it, it will be most, most understandable for you uh, that uh, only 25% of Ukrainian art residency, they continue to work and uh, function as artistic uh, um, tools, yes? And 33% uh, of this uh, residency, they are now in a hybrid format. Uh, mostly of them are transformed to shelters, and sometimes uh, they in, um, host even a team of these residences. And the uh, biggest part of uh, art residency, unfortunately, stopped to uh, work. Uh, so they like uh, say that we are on hold, on pause, uh, and unfortunately they couldn't prolong their um, activities. And uh, here you can see the regional difference, uh, which mostly connected surely with uh, um, a tax zone. Uh, and um, uh, you can see that um, the residency which can survive, uh, they situated now in the east of Ukraine. Uh, but I think it's quite interesting um, case here. It's uh, Artko Zeman residency in uh, Ohtyrka, near Ohtyrka, uh, some region. Um, and uh, this is residency guided by uh, Natalia Ivanova, uh, curator of Yermilov Center. And as for me, it's example how um, important like individual uh, uh, human um, factor uh, in um, art field and uh, especially like in creation saved zone where people can not only live but also continue to work um, artistically. Uh, if uh, we also speak about team with uh, our um, target uh, group and uh, uh, what we can say now that the biggest part of um, team works uh, remotely uh, and it's not only uh, like in different cities, sometimes even in different countries and sh surely the main problem which rised uh, now uh, for team uh, of residency uh, is uh, salary. Uh, if we uh, talk about target audience, it's not uh, changed significantly, but nevertheless, the main difference is that now uh, uh, Ukrainian residency focus mostly on uh, Ukrainian artists, and it's understandable because uh, uh, people don't want to take responsibility um, for life of uh, uh, people, other people, and specifically for foreign uh, artists. And uh, surely uh, target audience now for, uh, on uh, artists who suffered the most during the war, who lost uh, uh, living spaces um, and uh, need um, sometimes very basic uh, things to survive. Uh, regarding selection criteria, uh, and it's uh, also, we can say, it implemented not only in Ukrainian field, but also internationally, that almost all selection criteria, they started to be not so important. Um, Surely it's quite uh, important that uh, persons still have uh, professional activity, um, but uh, there are no requests um, to create uh, some artistic works. So it's uh, not demanding. Uh, and uh, uh, what is interesting also for Ukrainian uh, field that uh, residency started to accept uh, uh, artists with uh, families, pets. Uh, so I should say that they started to be more inclusive. Uh, if we spoke about problems, it's only some of them, uh, but uh, surely it's like uh, lack of sustainable support, um, a loss of physical space sometimes, uh, impossibility to have long-term plans. Um, sometimes uh, our audio target audience mentioned that they uh, themselves need uh, psychotherapist help. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's uh, unwilling to take responsibility for lives uh, of residents. And uh, here is a long list of needs, and uh, surely most of these uh, needs connected uh, uh, with financial support, but also with staff, um, sometimes uh, with needs of um, archiving works, uh, and uh, needs of materials, uh, and we all understand that uh, we faced we we will face the hard winter time. So um, sometimes it's question of uh, generators, etc. 
And uh, to the end, on optimistic uh, notes, uh, uh, here is a list of um, residents uh, who managed to survive in this time and also have these artistic activities inside their residences. So it's a assortment room from Ivano from Gives, Hata Masterny from the same region, Sorin rooms available uh, from Ushgorod, Nazar Vojtovic residency, it's in Ternopil region, Naposti, uh, it's creative cluster in Ternopil as well. Bakuta Creative Hub in Kamenets Podilsk region, Art Pozeman, which I mentioned already in Sum region, and Biruchi Art Residency. And here is uh, our contact. Uh, we are open for negotiation, for cooperation. So if you will have some propositions or ideas, uh, we will be very happy to cooperate. So thank you very much for your attention. Maybe someone will have uh, questions. Uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, have a nice productive conference. <laughs> Goodbye.